Okay, welcome to 15.3 absolute value functions. So if we're going to do absolute value functions, we need to uh, review absolute value. So please do. Absolute value of 8 is 8. Absolute value makes everything positive except, of course, 0. Absolute value of negative 12, positive 12. Number three, that's three times the absolute value of x. So you would do three times the absolute value of eight. Absolute values are grouping symbols, just like parentheses. So you do them first. So you do three times eight, 24. Finish the rest if you haven't. This is one third times the absolute value of negative 12, which is 12. Canceling it, we get 4. This is 1 third, the absolute value of 8, which is 8. And you get 8 thirds. And if you had to graph a point with 8 thirds, you might change it to 2 and 2 thirds, right? Because 6 thirds is 2. This one is negative 1 third times the absolute value of negative 12, which is positive 12. So you might think this answer is going to be positive, but it's not. It's negative 4. There's one negative actually in that problem. Right, so we showed you this picture in an earlier lesson on translation of functions. Right When we, we learned parabolas, I had mentioned that there was, parabolas are U-shaped, that there was a V-shaped function, and that V-shaped function is absolute value. So we're going to graph the simplest one we could possibly graph. f of x equals the absolute value of x. So let's write y equals the absolute value of x. Y f of x, same thing. So the absolute value of negative 3, 3. The absolute value of negative 2, 2. Fill in the rest of the table and plot the points. These are going to be symmetrical. You're going to see just like parabolas work. So negative 3, 3 goes right there. Negative 2, 2, negative 1, 1, 0, 0. They're symmetrical. There's a 1, 1 and a 2, 2 and a 3, 3. You know, if I put 10 in there, I get 10 for this one. And you probably want a straight edge for this. And that's how you plot what you just saw. That's the absolute, f of x equals the absolute value of x. And so we're going to do a lot of domain and range today. And so try to figure out the domain and range of this function. Well, you know, it goes on forever in both the positive and negative direction, and there's no gaps in it. So the domain, the possible values of x is all real numbers. But the range is not all real numbers. Try to figure it out. But y can't possibly be down there. In fact, right, these are point, go on forever, but they are pointing up, both of them. Right? So y will always be greater than or equal to 0. Right? The range is all the possible y values. Right, so there's the function we just graphed f of x equals x and we're now going to stretch it vertically we did this earlier with parabolas so this a when it's a whole number when it's a when it's a greater than one number it doesn't have to be a whole number but we're going to do whole numbers right when that number right there is greater than one we stretch the absolute value function so let's see that so y now equals 3 times the absolute value of x. So the absolute value of x here is 3, and 3 times 3 is 9. And then the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 0 is 0. These are going to be symmetrical. So that's a multiplication symbol. So let's plot those points. So we have negative 3, 9. Negative 3, 9. So this point that was here is now up there. We're going to stretch it. Negative 2, 6. 
is here, negative 1, 3. Still has 0, 0. And remembering these are symmetrical. And so if I draw this new function, I think I've made a better version of it in a second. Let's see, there it is. And let me erase that. And there is the stretch, the vertical stretch of the absolute value of x. We've multiplied it by 3. So if we stretch it by multiplying by a number greater, an a greater than 1, what happens when we multiply by a fraction? Right. It shrinks. So there's the two we already did. There's f of x equals x. There's 3 times uh, the oh, absolute value of x. Sometimes I forget to write the absolute value. If I did, you know it's supposed to be there. All right, so there's the stretch. So now we're going to shrink it. So let's do that in a different color. And so y equals 1 half times the absolute value of x. So it's 1 half times the absolute value of negative 3, which is 3. So it's 1 half times 3, or 3 halves. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2. Half of 2 is 1, right? So let's write this out. 1 half times 2 is 1. 1 half times 1 is 1 half. 1 half times 0 is 0. It's going to be symmetrical. So we're going to get the same points. All right, and when we plot these points, negative 3, 3 halves is 1 and a half, right? Negative 2, 1, negative 1, 1 half. And there's going to be these symmetrical points. It still has 0, 0. And there is the vertical shrink of the absolute value of x. One of the things you should notice is look at the slope. Find the slope of the one we just graphed. Well, the slope on one side is 1 half. The slope on the other side is negative 1 half. That's interesting. Right? The original one we did, the slope was 1 on one side and negative 1 on the other side. The st stretch we did, the slope was 3 on one side and it was negative 3 on the other side. We're going to use that in a second. All right, so we're going to write this as a piecewise function. All right, so this is the one you just did, f of x equals 3 times the absolute value of x. We're combining this with what we've been doing, especially the first lesson. So f of x equals, now, the border between the two sides, right? We have two different, we're going to treat this as two linear functions. So let's, that we, we drew that linear function, but only the part where if x is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so let's look at that, erase that. And so on that side, what would be the linear function for that side? Well, it has a y-intercept of 0, 0. And we just said on the last screen it has a slope of 3. So if f of x, if x is greater than or equal to 0, right, f of x equals 3x, right, 3x plus 0. And what if x is less than 0? Now, I'm not going to put another equal sign there because you can't have two equal signs, right? You have to have one of them, right? You have to have one of them filled in and the other empty. And they're actually right on top of each other here. And so the other side, the slope, is negative 3. Still same y-intercept. So we're looking, we're doing this linear function right there. Right? But we're only using the side where x is less than 0. So an absolute value function, in fact, can be written as a piecewise function. Right? This could be a piecewise function where when x is greater than or equal to 0, we're using 3x. And when x is less than 0, we're using negative 3x. And so we're going to do this one. This is the f of x equals 1 fourth x. 
So there's our dividing point. So let's write a linear function for this side. Well, when x is greater than or equal, I should write if, if x is greater than or equal to 0, the slope here, right, this is 1 fourth times x, the slope better be 1 fourth. So y-intercept is 0, 0, so you do 1 fourth x. No absolute value sign on that because we're writing it as a typical linear function. The other side of the linear function has a slope of negative 1 fourth. And so when x, if x is less than 0, we're going to write the function negative 1 fourth x. And so we've really written our absolute value function as a piecewise function. Right? Both of these things, both of this and this, have the exact same graph. They have the exact same points. All right, so let's work backwards now. We have a function there. It's a V-shape, so we know it should have absolute value in it. Okay, so we want to write, we're going to use function notation, and we know it has absolute value. But we know the plain old absolute value of x is this V, and it goes from 10, there it goes through the point 10, 10, and negative 10, it looks like that. So it's not that one. It's been stretched. But we need to figure out what number goes there. Well, what number goes there is obviously the slope, right? That's what we used on the last screen. So the slope on this side, let's see, looks like 5, right? And the slope on this side looks like negative 5. And so this is f of x equals 5 times the absolute value of x. And if you're not sure that's right, you could put some points in here, right? You say x is Let's say x is 2, then y would be, right, 5 times the absolute value of x2. We better have the point 210. There it is, right? And if we put in, uh, say, negative 1 in there, it would be absolute value of negative 1 is 1, and 5 times 1 is 5, and that point right there is on the graph. Yeah, now those are the points that made that function. All right, so now I'm going to take it and make it upside down. Right? When we did the parabolas, right, and then they were upside down, how did we do that? The same rule. Well, hopefully you're thinking, and I'm going to use g of x just to be different, but we should use red since the graph is red. So we're going to use g of x, and g of x, hopefully you're thinking, it's negative 5x. Right? When we were doing uh, f of x equal to x, like 2x squared, we wanted to flip it down, that coefficient, all you had to do was make that coefficient negative. Same rule. And if you want to check, make a t-table and check that you, that makes that point, that's, you can do that. All right, so we're going to do some more domain and range. All right, so there's one right there. Let's see, we're finding domain and range of that. So once again, it goes on forever in both directions. All the possible values of x are all real numbers. Now find the range. Well, y can't possibly ever be up there because both sides are pointing down. So y will be less than or equal to 0, right? The highest point of y, the vertex, is 0. All right, let's see what else we have here. All right, so now you're going to write an absolute value function for that graph. All right, so we're going to write f of x. We know it has absolute value. We know that because it's a v-shape. We could write, so that's why it says write an absolute value function. I need to say that so you don't write a piecewise function. You could do that. And we need the slope. Slope here looks one-third, right? On that side, it's negative one third on that side, and it's positive one third on that side. But the slope there is a version of one third. But this is upside down, so what else do we need? Right? It's f of x equals negative one third times the absolute value of x. That is a vertical shrink of 
f of x equals x, absolute value of x. So let's practice. Right, so let's write an absolute value for that one. Slope here looks like one tenth. So this is f of x equals one tenth positive who's pointing up times the absolute value of x. All right, now we're going to write that as a piecewise. So we need a function for x greater than or equal to zero. We need another part for x less than zero. You could put the or equal to on either one, but you cannot put it on both. And you have to put it on one or you have a gap of zero. We don't, we don't want a gap. All right, so on one side, the slope is one tenth, right? No, it's one tenth times x, no absolute value. Right? This is a linear function all by itself that we only want that right-hand side. And the other side, therefore, is negative one-tenth x. Right, final question, write an absolute value function for that. Oh, it's the one we just did, upside down. Well, I'll just write e of x to be different. It's upside down, so it's negative one tenth times the absolute value of x. Write an absolute value function, so you know not to use piecewise. 